Well, as you can see, we're walking through the book of Proverbs. We share with you many Proverbs there through that little introduction or whatever. I uh, started last week on uh, October the 1st. We started studying Proverbs chapter 1. Then throughout the week, this past week, hopefully we as a church have been reading through the book of Proverbs. So that means today we've made it all the way to where? That's right, Proverbs chapter 8 today. And we're going to continue reading through the book of Proverbs as a church for this entire month. October has 31 days. There are 31 days, 31 books, uh, chapters in the book of Proverbs. So uh, read along with us, if you will. Uh, if you didn't do it last week, that's all right. You can start today. Read chapter 8. We're going to do that today in, in, in the sermon. And then tomorrow you can pick up with Proverbs chapter 9 and just keep going on along with us and read Proverbs. Proverbs is a wisdom book. Uh, it has actually gives us wisdom on how to live. Uh, we talked about last week uh, of how it was uh, the, the way of living, living skillfully. So Proverbs does that. It teaches you how to live with skill. Today's an interesting proverb. Again, if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and turn there to Proverbs chapter 8. Relationships matter. In fact, there are healthy relationships, but we all know that there are also relationships that are better for us to just walk away from. Proverbs chapter 7 and 8 are an illustration of that. Yesterday, if you read along with us, you saw Proverbs chapter 7 was warning us about what kind of a relationship we should stay away from. Read Proverbs chapter 7, it deals with this adulterous woman and this father is writing to this son, and he's like, stay away from women like that. It'll only cause you harm, it'll only cause you trouble. He's, this is a father writing to his son, he says, look out, you see those kind of women? Stay away from them. And then in Proverbs chapter 8, he's going to talk about another type of woman. He's going to call her wisdom, and he says, now this is the kind of woman that you want to pursue. So this father is writing to this son, and in Proverbs chapter 7, and in Proverbs chapter 8, he's, he's kind of comparing these two different types of people. And he says, one you should run away from, and the other you should run to. In fact, uh, during this week, uh, I've been reading through the book of Proverbs with my two oldest sons, Jack and Max, on our way to school. We read through the book of Proverbs, and then we've got to pick out our favorite verse. Now, let's be honest, if you read some of these Proverbs, that can kind of be... Uh, an interesting conversation with a 9-year-old and a 13-year-old, right? Or 14-year-old, kind of scary stuff. But uh, we were reading through that, and just the other day, Max asked me the question. He's like, why is it that it says wisdom is a woman? I was like, that's a good question. Thank you for asking that on our way to school. I really don't have time to answer that. So I just kind of gave him the cliff note version. And I said, think about it this way. It was like a father. He was writing to, a son, to his son, and that's kind of how the book of Proverbs is laid out. And he's saying, listen, you can have a choice to have a relationship with this kind of woman or this kind of woman. And he's trying to instill values into his son. And he's saying, stay away from these women. Stay away from these type of people. And then he says, here, wisdom, that's the kind of person you should run to. Sadly, we don't choose that a lot of times, do we? A lot of times we choose the other type of person. And he calls that throughout the book of Proverbs, foolish. He calls it folly. And he says, don't act like a fool, basically. He says, choose wisdom. Here in chapter 8, God is showing us how to live differently. Here in chapter 8, we've, we've got so much information that is thrown at us here in our, in our day and time. We've got more information available to us today than any type of time in history. It's hard to sort through what's good, what's bad, what's real, what's fake. It's, it's difficult to do all of that. And it's difficult to know what to take into our heart, what to apply to our lives, or what to run away with. Now again, Proverbs is going to help us that, and he's going to kind of give us a new perspective on life. That's what Proverbs chapter 8 is. Proverbs chapter 8 is just that. It's a new perspective on life. As we, as we read through the book of Proverbs, you're going to notice something. Wisdom is more than just an idea that is out there. Really what wisdom is? Wisdom is a person. Now, these are not just wise sayings from Solomon. These truly are God's Word to us. And the fact that the Word, capital W, is Jesus Himself. In fact, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, Paul says that. Paul talks about Jesus being the wisdom of God. So as we read through the book of Proverbs, this is what I told Max as well. I said, when we read through the book of Proverbs and when we see wisdom, we can also read Jesus in that. When it says, seek after wisdom, what could we say? Seek after what? 
Yeah, when it says wisdom is better than, than gold and silver, we can say Jesus is better than gold and silver. When it says wisdom will give you life, we can say Jesus will give you life. So as we read through the book of Proverbs and we talk about wisdom, we're also talking about a person. We're talking about Jesus himself. Now I want to walk through Proverbs chapter 8 with you this morning. I want to notice just a few things. The first thing we see, just like we saw last week in Proverbs chapter 1, we hear wisdom calling. We hear, we hear wisdom and it's calling after us. It's calling to us. It's, it's declaring some of the, that we have truth to be, we need to hear. Check out the Bible with me in Proverbs chapter, one, or chapter 8, beginning in verse 1. Look at what it says. Doesn't wisdom call out? Doesn't understanding make her voice heard? At the heights overlooking the road, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates, at the entry to the city, at the main entrance, she cries out. You hear the verse here, it's very clear that wisdom has this desire to get our attention. And this morning, I hope that you can stop for a minute and just listen. Wisdom wants, wisdom desires our attention. In his mercy, the Lord continues to call sinners. The, in, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, we're told this, The Lord does not delay his promises, as some understand delay, but he's patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Here we have Jesus calling out to us, and he says, listen, today is the day of salvation. Don't wait. Don't keep putting it to the side. Today is the day. Wisdom is calling. Jesus is calling after us. Decide today to follow Jesus. Wisdom, or Jesus, as we're talking, he's, he's calling out in a public square. Go back to Proverbs chapter 8. Did you see verses 1 through 3, kind of what it says? He says, listen, he's at the heights overlooking the road. You kind of see him on top of this hill, and he's calling down to the people. It says he's behind, beside the gates at the entry to the city where everybody's coming in, where everybody's coming out. He's calling out. It says he's at the main entrance. Wisdom is calling out. In other words, again, this is in vast contrast to chapter 7. In chapter 7, it talks about this adulterous woman. In chapter 7, it talks about this foolishness, and it always talks about it hides in the darkness. It always talks about it, it speaks in the shadows. That's the complete opposite of what's taking place here in chapter 8. Jesus is not hiding anything from us. He's calling out to the open for us. And he's saying, listen, I have something to say to you. We have Jesus calling out to us today. We have wisdom calling out to us today. Now, I know there's a song, softly and tenderly he's calling. No, he's screaming at us today. He's yelling at us today. And look at what he yells for. Let's keep reading verses 4 and 5. It says, people... I call out to you. My cry is to mankind. So in other words, if you're here this morning, guess what? Jesus is calling after you. He's calling to you. Verse 5, he tells us what? He says, learn and to be shrewd, you who are inexperienced. Develop common sense. Anybody want to amen that part? Develop common sense, you who are foolish. He says, listen, the call is for everyone. This morning he is reaching out to you. He's offering this invitation. I love chapter 8 because it starts with this invitation of Jesus calling out to us. I love chapter 8 because it begins with Jesus starting out saying, I've got some information for everybody here. And then it's going to end with an invitation too. It starts with an invitation and ends with an invitation. At the beginning he says, here I am, I'm calling out. Now what is he calling? What has he got to say to us? Well, now that he's calling, you know what he's going to say? He's going to say, let me explain to you why you should choose wisdom. Let me explain to you why you should choose Christ. And secondly, that's what we see. He says, here's some wisdom's worth. What is wisdom worth? Why should we choose Christ? Why should we follow after wisdom? What's the, what's the importance of it? Well, let's keep reading. Look in verse 6. We're just going to follow right through Proverbs chapter 8 today. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 6, he says this, listen. He's calling. We should listen. He says, listen, for I speak of noble things. And what my lips say is right. For my mouth tells the truth, and wickedness is detestable to my lips. All the words of my mouth are righteous. None of them are deceptive or perverse. All of them are clear to the perspective and right 
to those who discover knowledge. Accept my instruction instead of silver and knowledge rather than pure gold. For wisdom, Jesus, wisdom is better than jewels and nothing desirable can compare with it. Now again, I love this picture of of what he says wisdom is, what he says Jesus is. In fact, you can go back to to verse 6 and he talks about these these adjectives that are used. First, he says, listen, I speak of noble things. He says, listen, these are, these are princely things. These are kingly things. These are noble things that I'm talking about. What else, what else, is, what else is he talking about when we come to, to the Word of God, when we come to Christ, when we come to this wisdom? He says, and the things that my lips say, they're right. This, this describes something that is straight. He says there's, there's nothing off-putting, there's nothing tricky, there's nothing you know, that we're trying to, to, to cover up. He says what I'm saying is, is right. They're true. He goes on in verse 7. For my mouth tells the truth. In fact, he even says all wickedness, there's no wickedness to it. All wickedness is detestable to my lips. Another word for that, he says, listen, they're righteous. The things that I say are true. They're wise, they're, wit, they're righteous. These are the things we should be after. This is the true news that we have. He goes on and he says, All the words of my mouth are righteous. None of them are deceptive or perverse. The things that God says he means and the things that he means are very clear. Mark Twain supposedly said, It isn't what I don't understand about the Bible that worries me. It's what I do understand. He says, I'm very clear to you what I want you to do. I'm very clear to you where I want you to, how I want you to live. Jesus says, I'm not hiding anything. I'm very clear to you. Now, there's two commands for us here in verses 6 through 11. Two things that we're supposed to do. You see the first one right there in verse 6, the very first word? The very first thing for us to do is this. He says, you guys need to listen. The first thing we need to do, he says, listen, I'm trying to to teach you something. I'm trying to show you something. You need to listen. Now, I'm sure many of you have run into people that that have said this. Why should I listen to you? If you're a parent, you've probably heard that before, right? Why should I listen to you? Or, Or maybe other people say, why should I listen to Jesus? Why should I listen to the Bible? Well, here's the reason, because he says, I speak truth. There's nothing tricky. There's nothing manipulative. God has never said anything that he was ashamed of. God has never said anything he wished he would have taken back. He's willing to say the hard things. He's blunt, and he doesn't try to flatter us. The world tells us actually what we want to hear. But God tells us what we need to hear. There's a big difference there. The world tells us take the shortcut. Indulge in that pleasure. Hoard your possessions. Hold that grudge. But wisdom, wisdom says just the opposite. Wisdom gives us truth to live today. It gives us a new perspective on life. So the very first thing he challenges us with is this. You need to listen. You need to hear the words that I'm saying. Now the second thing is even more important. Not only should we listen, but the second thing he says is this. Look at what it says in next it says you need to accept not only should we listen what he says you also have to accept what he says go back to verse 9 and and notice what verse 9 says it says listen all of God's words are clear to the perspective perceptive now what that means is this the word of God is open to the open person it's reasonable to the reasonable person how 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 can someone accept the word of God actually says more about us than it does about the word of god james chapter 1 verse 21 james 121 says something different it kind of puts it this way james 121 says therefore ridding yourselves of all moral filth and evil humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save you this the, the fact of the matter is some people just won't accept what god says isn't that true in fact, I'm going to be reading some things probably here in a little bit or reading some things here in a, a, later on in a couple of weeks, and some people are just going to say, oh, I don't like that part. Well, that's the thing. We don't get to pick and choose what we like. He says this. He says, humbly receive the implanted word. 
How do you receive what God says? How do you receive what he, what, he, what he teaches us in his word? He says, humbly receive it. You can't just treat Jesus as a theory. You've got to be hungry for his truth. We have to accept what he says. Go back to Proverbs 8. Look again in verse 10. Proverbs 8, verse 10, it's very clear. It says, accept my instructions. You see, we have to choose what we take hold of. We have to choose what we're going to grab. Because notice what it says in verse 10. Verse 10 is actually a, a very important verse. You could circle a lot of words in it because it says, Accept my instruction instead of silver. So you've got to make a choice. What are you pursuing? Are you pursuing God? Or are you pursuing things for yourself? Are you pursuing what God desires? Or are you pursuing what you desire? Are you pursuing God's motives or your motives? Are you pursuing God or money? He says, accept my instruction instead of silver. It's an either or. It's a choice. Again, you can't follow Jesus and live like the world at the same time. It's a choice. You can't say yes to Jesus and yes to the world at the same time. It's a choice. Someone said, whatever takes, whatever we take, takes us. What are we taking? We either love wisdom we love silver. Jesus put it this way in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6, verse 24. Jesus said something very, very, very clear. He says, no one can be a slave of two masters. Since they'll either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot be slaves of God and money. It's a choice. We have to accept wisdom. We have to accept Jesus. And when we accept it, then the true wisdom comes our way. And when true wisdom comes our way, we get something better than money. When true wisdom comes our way, we get something better than silver. We get something better than jewels. In fact, that's what we keep reading. We see this in Proverbs chapter 8. We get wisdom's rewards. Look at what it says here. Keep going. This is the third thing we get. We get wisdom's rewards. What is wisdom's rewards? What, what are these rewards that wisdom has to offer for us? Again, you could, you, you, over the verse, next few verses, all the way from verse 12 all the way down to verse 31, you're going to see this abundance of personal pronouns. It's like I, mine, me, my, and it's wisdom who's doing the talking. So this is really what it's saying. When you receive Christ, when you get wisdom, that's exactly what you get. You get Christ. I love these, these people who are standing up before you all ago, and they're, standing in this baptistry and they're declaring their faith in Christ and they're like listen I received Christ and you know what I got I got Jesus and that's better than everything else well I've got Christ and that's the answer I got Christ and he's worth it all that's the reward the reward is Jesus and Jesus alone you get him which is better than everything else and that's what we see in verses 12 through verse 31 he says you get Jesus let's read it and let's just see what's going on and Proverbs chapter 8, beginning in verse 12, he says, I, wisdom, share a home with shrewdness and have knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate arrogant pride, evil conduct, perverse speech. I possess good advice and competence. I have understanding and strength. It's by me that kings reign and rulers enact law. Just law. By me, princes lead as do nobles and all righteous judges. I love those who love me. And those who search for me, find me. With me are riches and honor, lasting wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than solid gold. My harvest than pure silver. I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice, giving wealth as an inheritance to, to those who love me. And filling their treasuries, the Lord made me at the beginning of his creation before his work of long ago. I was formed before ancient times from the beginning, before the earth began. I was born when there was no watery depths and no springs filled with water. I was delivered before the mountains and hills were established, before he made the land, the fields, or the first soil of earth. I was there when he established the heavens and he laid out the horizon on the surface of the ocean, when he placed the skies above and when the fountains of the ocean gushed out. 
when he set a limit for the sea so that the waters would not violate his command, when he laid out the foundations of the earth, I was a skilled craftsman beside him. I was his delight every day, always rejoicing before him. I was rejoicing in the inhabited world, delighting in the human race. Now, there's some hard passages in some of this, and some of this is difficult to understand, but the whole mindset is this, is, is just look at the beauty of wisdom. Look at the beauty of what there is before us. Now, back up to verse 13. I want to show you a few things. Whenever we receive wisdom, there's a few things that we also get to, to, to fall in line. First thing is this. You get to learn what wisdom hates. What is it that wisdom hates? Well, he tells us that. Verses 13, he says this. To fear of the Lord is to hate evil. He says, listen, wisdom now declares it kind of in this negative way. He says, when you live, you're going to live differently. And when you, when you live differently, you're going to dislike. You can, here's the harsh word we try to teach our kids not to say it. You're going to hate certain things. And he says, the fear of the Lord is hating evil. There can be no fellowship with light and darkness. We don't rejoice in the devil's work. We hate evil. What kind of evil? Well, he goes on, he says, I hate arrogant pride. That's the, the opposite of humility. Earlier we read, he says, humbly receive the implanted word of God. This is just the opposite of this. This is arrogant pride. These are the people who stand up and say, you can't tell me anything. Arrogant pride, wisdom hates. He says, evil conduct. Just living in the wrong way. Living apart from what God's word says. He says, that's what evil is like. He says, and I hate it. Or he says, perverse speech. Watch what you say. Watch your tongue. James, which is another wisdom book in the New Testament, speaks about the tongue over and over and how you need to watch what you say. Next week in Proverbs chapter 15, when I'm preaching on that, there's a whole section about how we're careful what we say. Be careful what, you, what comes out of your mouth. Wisdom is watching what you say. And here it says, evil or wisdom hates perverse speech. Now what that is simply means is this. We live differently. It means we talk differently. It means we see the world differently. I love the way Albert Muller puts it. We have a Christian worldview. We don't see life like everybody else sees life out there, right? We have a Christian worldview, which shapes everything we do, which shapes everything we say, which shapes what we believe, which shapes what we watch, which shapes what we hear, which shapes everything about us. That's wisdom. That's what the book of Proverbs is trying to teach us. Wisdom provides these strategies to succeed in life in fact look at what verse 14 that's what he says he says i possess good advice and competence i have understanding and strength he says you want to know how to live life in a christian way in this crazy world just follow scripture he says i possess good advice you got questions i do anybody else got questions on how to live you got questions on how to be a good parent me i do Got questions on how to have a to be a better husband to your wife? Yeah. And he says, I have good advice. The problem is, I think a lot of times we look in the wrong places for our advice. And here we see the book of Proverbs says, I'm the one that you need to be looking at. I have the right answers. I have good advice. Have you ever got bad advice from people before? <laughs> yeah. And here the Bible is sitting there telling us this. You want good advice? Come to the source of life. That's what verses 21 through 31 is really all about. Verses 21 through 31, it really is about, is, is about listen, I created everything. You, did you kind of catch up on that? It's kind of difficult to understand. He says, listen, I created everything. I created the waters. I created the mountains. I was there from the beginning. So here's what he's basically saying. I've been there the whole time. Why are you looking in other places to find the answers of life? I created life. If you want to know the answers to life, ask me because I'm the one who created it. Doesn't that make sense? 
That's what I try to tell my kids all the time. I created you. Listen to me. <laughs> I have the answers. That's what the Lord is basically saying to us. I've been here for eternity. You got questions about marriage? I invented marriage. He says, I can answer those questions. That's what she hates, but we keep on seeing verses 14 through 16 what wisdom is. We just simply understand what, what is wisdom. What verses 14 through 16 tells us that wisdom is, wisdom is something that we can grab hold of. He says, I possess this good advice. I possess this truth. I have this power. He says, even in leadership, verses 15 and 16, it's by me kings reign. Anybody worried that some of our leaders are wacko? He says, I, I got control over all of it. Princes lead, as do nobles. Righteous judge. Even in leadership, Jesus is the secret to success. Jesus knows how to deal with hard-headed and hard-hearted people. Isn't that good to know? In fact, Roy Ortland, he's got a commentary on Proverbs in my office. He put it this way, especially in the church, we must be led by people sold out for Jesus. We need wise, humble, mature, Christ-like leaders. He says, just humbly submit to the Lord and follow Jesus. He says, and I'm in control of it all. Here's the good news. That's who we all can become. We can be people who are following Jesus and Jesus is leading us, praise the Lord. Verses 17 through 21. Again, that's this beautiful picture of what he's doing and who he is. Verse 17, I love those who love me. Isn't that a great verse? And then check this next one out. And those who search for me, what? Find me. Any of you lack wisdom? James writes, let him ask. And God will give it to us, liberally. He, what do you need? You want it? Search for Jesus. Open the door. If you search for me, you will find me, he says. What a great promise. We get Jesus if we search for Jesus. I love Warren Wiersbe, how he describes this passage. He says, one of the lessons of this, power, this paragraph is that the power and the splendor of God is all around us. It's the evidence of what God can do when we look at creation. The same God who created creation everything wants to work in our lives is that not amazing he says listen i created it all and because i created it all i created you and because i created you i can make your life i can make your life follow my plans i can make your life fulfill my purposes for his glory so what do we do what do we do with all this stuff let me close how he closes, with an invitation. I want you to see wisdom's invitation here at the end. It's the last thing. The last thing in verses 32 through verse 36 is wisdom's invitation. I told you he began with an invitation. He's calling out to the streets. And he's going to end with an invitation as well. Read with me in verse 32. And now, my son, again, this father who's writing to his sons, and now, my son, listen to me. Those who keep my ways are happy. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Don't ignore it. Anyone who listens to me is happy. Watching at my doors every day, waiting by the post of my door. For the one who finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But the one who misses me harms himself. And all who hate me Love, death. Did you notice something there at the beginning of verse 32? Verse 32, verse 33, verse 34. Did you see? This sounds like a father to me talking to a son. You see what he says over and over? Listen to me. Did you see that? He said it three different times. Listen to me. Listen to my instruction. Anybody who's listening to me, it's almost like, are you here? Are you listening? I feel like a father. I feel like that sometimes too. I'm talking to my kids. Like, are, you, are you hearing the words that are coming out of my mouth? Listen to me. That's what this, this, this author is doing. He says, listen. Listen to what I'm saying. Wisdom is calling. And he's giving this invitation. This, and he's saying, 
Are you listening? Are you ready to make this life-changing decision? Are you ready to turn from yourself? Are you ready to turn from your sin? Are you ready to quit trying to follow the things of this world? Are you ready to start following the things of God? Listen to me, he says. Stop living that way and start living this way. Stop following after things that will not fulfill you and start following Jesus. Are you listening to me, the, the, the author's saying? Because he says, ultimately... Ultimately, if you don't find me, you find death. That's why this invitation is so important. Because the wisdom of Christ is the one and only necessity of this life. Because it is the one and only necessity for eternal life. So this, this author says, listen, at the end, you've got to be decisive you cannot take a wait and see approach. He says, listen, you must keep, you must listen. Not only listen, look at three times. It says, listen and keep my ways. Listen to what I say and live the way I'm telling you to. Or verse 33 says, listen and be wise. Don't ignore it. Verse 34, he says, listen and be happy. Be blessed. Because in verse 35, whoever finds me finds life. Maybe the, you're here this morning and you need that simple proverb right there. Whoever finds me finds life. Again, I want to go back to the very beginning of the service. Standing before you were three individuals who stood before you and said, I have found life because I have found Jesus. I have found life because I found Jesus. It has changed my life. It has changed my perspective. It has changed who I am. I'm no longer who I was. I am now a new creation in Christ. I have found Jesus. And I want to offer that to you today. Have you found Jesus? Again, look at verse 35. For the one who finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. You see, that's what he's offering to us this morning. He's offering a new life. But he didn't stop in verse 35, did he? There's one more verse. But the ones who misses me, the one who does not find me, the one who who lets me slip through their fingers, the one who misses me, harms himself. You're not harming God. Harms himself. And all who hate me love death. You see the comparison there? You find Jesus, you get life. But apart from Jesus is death. Is hell. Is eternally separated from him. And the harm is on you. So my prayer and my plea for you this morning is this. Don't miss Jesus. Don't miss wisdom. Find him today. If you're here this morning, again, I want to offer this invitation that the book of Proverbs offers to us. And I want to close again back to this commentary that I read from Roy Ortland. He says this. Hold everything else lightly, but grab hold of Jesus, the crucified friend of sinners, and never let him go. Hold everything else loosely, lightly, but hold on to Jesus. Let me close with this one verse in 1 John chapter 5, verse 12. It says this, the one who has the Son has life. But the one who does not have the Son of God does not have life. So just a real simple question this morning. Have you found Jesus? Have you received wisdom? Have you made the decision that these young ladies and young men made this morning? Have you followed Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? If you've not, then this morning I want to offer you an invitation to come and choose Jesus. Come and find life. Don't put it off. Don't miss this opportunity. Today, find Jesus.
Would you bow your heads right where you are? God, I want to pray right now for the men and women in this room. As we have opened up the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, God, the, the message is clear. Wisdom is calling. Christ is calling. Jesus, you are calling today for people to follow you. You're calling today for us to make our choice to obey you. So God, I pray right now, if there's someone here who's never made that decision to follow you, today would be that day. God, if there's someone here today, if they've, they've been putting it off, maybe they've been waiting another week, another time, maybe a, another Sunday, may today be the day that they find you, that they trust you. Because those who find the Son have life. But those who do not, do not have life. So God, I pray right now that people would follow you and find life. Allow your Holy Spirit to speak. Convict hearts right now. For us to follow you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.